Welcome back to 380. Uh, this is our star file here, the compact shaft. Uh, we'll be using this repeatedly this week. It's got all of its usual stuff going on here. Uh, let's have a look, I suppose, at its innards. Just click and hold until I get what I want. Let's see here. Uh, when I modeled this, I assumed that the key was sitting on these fillets. So it's a little bit strangely floating right now. Uh, from this point of view, uh, if you look at it from the other side, it's touching. Um, but on the whole, fairly routine uh, stuff here. Two gears. Uh, this is based on the diagram in Orlov. Won't get into what it is because I don't remember. But uh, we have to get it a little bit set up here. If I drag this, it moves. It's not great. Uh, so let's go ahead here and line this all up before we start with the history. So let's give this first a rigid group. Still moves. So then let's go ahead and also ground the shaft. Now it's nicely stuck in, stuck in space. Turn on the history, right click at the top, capture design history. Makes a whole bunch of stuff inside of a little folder. Look at all that. That Those are all the components being made and placed. So if you want, you can rename this. Right click. No, sorry. It's rename is other, just out of sight there. And we'll call this uh, import or something like that, whatever you want. Perfect. That's our import. Now, Housings are usually, well, we're going to assume the housing is cast. Uh, what we're going to be using is this create form, free form, uh, sort of designer that Fusion has. It's a fabulous thing. We'll be using a very basic way today uh, just to make the basic shape that's going to be covering this. Um, this is, this year might make it a little more interesting on the top level. Um, try and curve it a bit at the top. So we'll start with a basic shape and you can just, you can follow along if you wish, or just watch this. Um, let's just figure out our views again, control four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine gives us various views. Sometimes this control eight, the see-through wire frame is what we would like to have. Uh, it is quite useful. It lets us see, for example, things like ball bearings and all that, even though it's not showing us right now. What's going on? You can kind of see it. It's not showing us stuff all the way down. It's strange. Anyway. Seven, sorry. So control seven is what we're after. We would like the housing to be at, at or through these ball bearings, more or less. Um, the load from the gear will be through the ball bearings in, out into the outer race and then into the housing. So we're gonna be aiming to have the housing through here. We'll be using, I don't know, five millimeter wall thickness today. Uh, let's just make sure we've actually got a metric part here. I'm fairly sure it is. Yeah, 40. So there's a metric part. So we'll be sticking with that. So again, depend, sorry, I have my uh, zoom is connected to my control button here. So this is the plan. Again, if we turn on our analysis, let's see what's happening. Uh, I'm going to make a new component here. Make sure we're at the top level. Standard is good. We'll call it a housing. I usually use an underscore if I don't have a part number. And I can activate it. What this does is ghost out the rest of the parts or components. You can also hide them all together. Uh, sometimes get this sort of strange, well, you get this strange thing from the analysis, you can turn that off. 
go ahead here, making sure the housing is active. We'll do a free form. Nothing happens until we see, sorry, nothing happens except for a new tab group or a new ribbon up here. What we need to do is make a box. There are various different types of things here, toruses and all the rest, but a box for us is probably best. Pick the plane first and it's saying, well, where? Let's attach it to the origin. Um, I'm just dragging here. You can kind of make it any size you want, but you have a chance to rejig this in a second. Now, depending on how you would have it, uh, it might show as one side first. Make sure it's symmetric around the shaft. Perfect. The shaft is on the origin. Let's put the housing on the origin. Now, what is this? It's a blob. It's kind of ugly. Um, you can pull it like so. Uh, obviously, if you pull too far down, it'll start protruding out the shaft, that is, the gears. It's not great. The other thing is these uh, little toggles. You can add uh, extra faces on that axis. The more faces you add, the tighter the uh, corners will be. This is crazy. There's other ways to do this. You don't want to have all this here just to get a tight corner up there. So the plan here is usually the less um, geometry you have, the easier it is to maintain and use the part. So I'm actually gonna just go with the bare minimum. Uh, if you want, you can go for four by four by four. Uh, three is okay, but four puts a edge right through the middle of the shaft again. If we go down to two, we don't really have enough geometry to control the corners. So I'm gonna go for four cube. So that looks kind of good. So we'll be able to use these edges later. We'll be able to move them around. They're not sized very well. So it's not too bad on the outside edges. Uh, these negatives can be shifted around. It doesn't matter because you'll notice the arrows point the other way. So right now, which one is which? So we want to be kind of around the bearings. You can see it eating the bearings here. So it looks like around 145. There's the gear. There's the gear again. So I've got one, looks like 125, 25. That's not right. 145. This one is not right. Let's figure out which one that is. That was 145. We can turn on our analysis here while we're at it. Uh, while this is in action, and we can have a look at what's going on. I might want to actually, eh, it's not bad. Let's just leave it there for now. Say, okay, symmetry, none. We don't need that right now. We can always add it later. Now, when you say, okay, it thinks for a minute and then makes this thing. Um, while we're at it, there's many ways, three ways <laughs> to look at these housings or these free forms. If you press one, two, and three with control press, you'll see the cage, which is what it's actually modeling. Three is the resultant form, the free form. That when we accept and finish the form, that's what we're going to get back in the BRAP land, which is back at the outside of the free form. And then two gives us a bit of both. So we can either control the cage or control, actually, we can select the inner parts as well here. I tend to flick between one and three. Now we want this housing to be open on the bottom. Let's turn our analysis off. It's tempting to just draw a box around these guys. 16 faces. If I press the lead right now, it will disappear. However, 
it depends what your selection filter is on. If I select all, sorry, I had it turned off there. I learned the last time by uh, the wrong thing. Notice down here, it says multiple selections. What it means here is I've selected faces and edges. If I delete that, it deletes the faces and the edges right next to it. So it's deleting these edges as well. You can delete edges if you wish. So what I need to do here when I draw my selection box around this, I need to filter my selection. So if you want, you can see select through, select all toggles them all off. Then I can go for my T-spline faces, which are what these guys are. Now when I draw around, it just deletes the piece. Don't forget to turn your selection back on. Nice. Now, if we look at it this direction, uh, there we go. I'd like to actually make this a little more round at the top. If we're gonna get a casting, why not go to town? What if I just delete this edge? Yeah, interesting. It's kind of good. So double click gets the whole row of edges. You'll notice you get this triangular shape here. This is fine, right? So if you wanna see the box frame version, that's what we've got. Ideally in free forms, uh, each face has four sides. So when we, if we undo properly, what I did was I deleted these edges. It kind of breaks it. T-splines are called T-splines because they allow for not four faces to come into one place or four edges coming into one vertex. Here we've got one, two, three, four. Here we've got four, right? So as long as we're careful, it shouldn't be too bad, but the system will keep track of it for us. So that's our faceted or cage version. But if we see the three is what we're gonna get when we export. So what else can we do with this? If we double click, we can select whole things. However, if I move this right now by right click, edit form, and see what I can do with that. That's, whoa, that's not, it's not kosher. We also want some symmetry, it turns out. So let's turn on symmetry. So up here, we've got symmetry. There's all different types of symmetry. Mirror, mirror internal is what we're after. The little preview is quite good. Mirror duplicate, circular duplicate, and then clear. You can also isolate if you're doing complicated tasks and then turn back on. Mirror internal. You get a green line. So anything I do on one side will now be repeated on the other side. Notice the yellow preview. So now if I edit this form, let me see what I'm doing. And again, if you want to see it in block form, you can do that. So I can undo, I can redo, I can all do all this normal stuff. So if we look at it like so, it's not bad. So let's have a look here. Turn on our analysis again. Clearance is okay. All right, so if you want, you can actually measure clearances, I believe. Let's try that. Yeah, so right now we've got about nine millimeters. It's probably good for now. Now out here, it's these uh, outside faces to the right and left in this view are a little bit curved as it goes through the bearing. It's probably not great. So I want to straighten this face. Uh, one way to do that is to edit the form and pull this guy up. It wrecks our circularity, that's okay. Like we don't necessarily need the housing to be exactly round. But I do want this 
face to be fairly flat. Doesn't need to be exact because if we were making this, and we'll do that in the guided later, uh, you would end up adding more material in here to fill in this spot so the bearings can sit and all the rest. So this would be unrealistic uh, so far, but I do want it to be flatter. So right now this is looking, we'll just escape out of that. Right now this is looking <laughs> as I undo what I did. Let me pull it back up. Edit the form. Sometimes when you do this, you lose track of where you are. So I'm moving it up 10. I can always type 10, say okay. So this gives me a flatter uh, side through the bearings, which is what I want. And if we want, we can just say, that's fine. Uh, another way is to add more symmetry, left or right this time. And we can actually pull these guys outboard to get our housing more square at the end. This is obviously too far, but you could pull it a bit to give yourself some room. However, again, it's not gonna be a big deal here. There's a nice gap in, in space here, so we don't need to bother too much. So just in case. Now, one thing that we might want to do is actually shift one piece so we've turned on symmetry. Another way, think another thing to do is to clear the symmetry. We have to clear it all at once, unfortunately. So we can clear that symmetry and then move parts of it. So for example, this whole end needs to be shifted slightly. So we've got about the over last third of the ball exposed on this side, it's too close here. Let's edit that form. Get it about the same. Again, this is not exact, but this gives us a chance to get the parts all set up. So there we go. Once we're happy with that, finish the form. We get this now what we call a B-rep. We can turn off our analysis. Perfect. Next stage is to thicken this. I am going to thicken it with the analysis turned on. So, yes, thicken. Pick your surface. I think it's minus five. Say okay. Let's have a look what we've got here. This one can be moved slightly to the left. This one slightly to the left as well. So let's go ahead here and shift that. So double click the in the history if I can get it to go. Come on now. And we can now move this. Some Sometimes I wish it didn't do this. And then sometimes like right now, I'm happy it does. It leaves the old body behind when you do this. It'll ghost it in in a way. If you turn off your analysis, you can see the ghosting. So, but in a way it's really great. The analysis remains. So then we can shift our stuff very slightly. And we can do both sides. Say okay and accept the form. You'll notice it updates. You know, you can measure this of course to be exact, but it gives you a good idea. So for now, we might, we might not be too happy with this clearance here. So for example, right now, our clearance is about, so right here is the minimum 3.8. This might not be enough. Why don't we move it up a bit? So we'll edit that again. You can move this guy up, say five. I can type that in exactly. Say okay. And finish the form. There we go. Perfect. So that's the basics uh, right now. 
So from here, the plan is to, in the guided, we'll go through this. What do we do with this sort of housing? We'll probably draw it again in the guided because right now it's protruding right through. And of course we need to trim this. We need to add some uh, geometry here to hold the bearings uh, and so on and so forth. The problem this week will be to shift from what we do in the guided into a different type of assembly, uh, radial to axial, I believe, or vice versa. Um, anyway, that's it. That's the intro to this stuff for today. Thanks for watching and over to you.